Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking all about crabs, specifically baby vampire crabs. What we see right here are definitely not vampire crabs. These are Halloween moon crabs that we bought thinking they were vampire crabs. Well, we ended up having to build out a brand new setup for these guys that would allow them to survive and thrive and they're doing fantastic now. But we ended up getting vampire crabs, putting them in the original enclosure and well, they bred and had babies. That has resulted in us having to take these babies and put them into a grow out system that we built as a DIY setup. They've turned out fantastic, they're growing fast, and today we're going to be talking all about these baby vampire crabs and how we care for them. And real quick before we get into this video, make sure you visit freshwaterscrub.com and use the code CRAB for 10% off all of your purchases. Merchandise, tools, plants, everything. So let's get into this video today. I've had a lot of questions about how to care for these baby vampire crabs and today we're going to go through that and what I'm going to do is go through the entire process of breaking down this little tub structure that we had built for these baby vampire crabs and talking about what and why we do what we do. So what I want to do to start is remove everything from this setup and as I'm removing it, what I need to do is just check to make sure that there are no crabs on the pieces that I'm removing. And there's one right there. Come back here, you little chunk. These things are elusive. I'm gonna take this little sponge that we have in here, and this is just to hold moisture, and I'm gonna get some water in this thing, and I'm gonna put it in this little container over here, right here. And we're just gonna get some water in here just to keep these guys nice and moist as they are in here put that right there so when we do find them as we have already found they have a place to go where they're safe and we have these things all over this driftwood here which is expected so what i want to try to do is gently and safely remove these from the driftwood one at a time placing them into this little cup here. So now that it appears that we have gotten all of the baby crabs out of the tub, we've also separated all of our components from this setup over onto the top here. And the reason I do this is because I want to make sure if there are any crabs left in this stuff that I can see them run across this white top and can capture them quickly. But that's why I separate them into their own little tub over here is simply so I know the count of how many is in here. Now that we have all this separated, I want to come back with just a clean paper towel and go ahead and start soaking up the water in the bottom. And the reason I do it this way, once again, is so I can check to make sure that there are no crabs left. So once I soak up this first part of water, I come in and I just take a look at this paper towel to see and make sure that there are no baby crabs left in here or are stuck to this paper towel, which it does not look like there are. And then we're just gonna set this right over here. We'll keep this process up until it is fully dried out, very gently patting the bottom here because you don't want to smush the crabs if there are any left. So looking here, I don't see any other crabs on here. Nothing there. And looking in the bottom here, I don't see any crabs either. All right, so we are now good. So I'm just gonna take this paper towel and simply clean the bottom out completely, getting all of this dirt and debris out of the bottom. Now with the tub itself being clean, I wanna go ahead and take a new tub with some water. And this water is actually from one of my fish tanks. So it's good and healthy water. And I wanna start cleaning off the pieces that are going in here. Just, just rinsing them really well, making sure that there's no dirt and debris on them. But we wanna maintain all of the beneficial bacteria that's on this. So that's why we're using tank water to clean this stuff off. And I'm just gonna come in and clean these leaves just, just barely, just literally dripping them in there, making sure that any food remnants that may be left in here, all that kind of stuff is just off. The other thing that's going to do is it's going to allow me to get any other crab babies that may be in here off so we can keep a good, accurate count. 
and it's time to go ahead and set this thing back up. I am by no means a crab expert, so if you happen to know things about vampire crabs and baby vampire crabs and you think that I should be doing something different, if you know me, I am very much the type of person that listens to feedback, constructive feedback, and tries to implement change to better the lives of my animals. So if there's something that I should be doing different, please let me know in the comments. And drop a comment below and let me know what you think about this. This is a super easy DIY setup. Okay, why I use this particular setup? Let's talk about that. These crabs right here, these little tiny vampire crabs. These actually come from the foresty areas of Indonesia and they are terrestrial dwelling crabs. They actually don't spend all their time in the water. They will go into the water. So most of the time they spend on the land. Why this little tub right here makes a great setup for these baby crabs, or at least is what I think, is the middle section right here, just right around this edge here, is actually raised and it leaves kind of like this little valley around it. Why this is good is because this gives the crabs the ability to have a water section in here while also maintaining a dry area in the middle. So if they want to get up out of the water, they are perfectly able to do so. What I like to do is first take some rock and just spread it around the outskirts of this tub inside of this little valley and up on the sides where there is gonna be water standing. And the reason is because these crabs may wanna be in the water and kind of up on something. This gives them the ability to get up on a rock out of the water while maintaining close contact with the water. And you actually see that in their behavior. They will be half submerged in the water up on one of these rocks. And then as you walk in or you turn the light on, then they, they, they just dip. They're just gone into the water quickly and that's it. The other thing that they like to do, they like to stay around driftwood. And I take these pieces of driftwood and I kind of put them somewhat submerged in the water where if they want to get up on the underside of it, they can. Or if they want to get on top of it, they can. And this gives them the same ability. It gives them the ability to be submerged in the water on a piece of driftwood and things of that nature. I have some dirt, which is actually some moss dirt. This is some sphagnum moss. I guess it would be the root system of sphagnum moss. And they will come and climb all over this. They will get all up inside of it. It also holds food and things of that nature. The dirt just gives them the ability to burrow, dig, whatever they may do in their natural habitat. So then I'm gonna come back and just simply place these leaves throughout this enclosure. Nothing specific, just throw them in here. And we want plenty of wet leaf coverage because this is in fact what they would live in in the forest floor is a bunch of damp leaves and things like that. So I am using live oak leaves and magnolia leaves and that's just simply because there is an abundance of those in North Texas where I live and they're easily collected as well as it's very easy to clean them for use in an aquarium, a terrarium, this crabitat setup, things of that nature. So that's why I use these particular types of leaves. So the leaves, when I collect them, what I'll do is I'll wash them really well and then you bake them in the oven to kill any bacteria or any kind of parasites that may exist within those leaves. So with that, this is completely the setup. It's, it's simple, it's easy, it's super easy to maintain. As you can see in this video, all in all this video, I don't know how long it's going to be at this point right now, but it's taken me about 20 minutes to maintain this and I do that maybe once a month just depending on how much evaporation occurs within this enclosure. So now that we have this completely set up, what I want to do is go ahead and reintroduce the crabs one by one back into this setup. So this is a little piece of foam that I have always kept with these crabs. It's just an easy thing to maintain moisture when I move them to another container for cleaning. So I'm just gonna drop this right here into this tub. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna look at these crabs and just see how many we have. Now, if you look, you can see these things are significantly larger than they were the last time we looked at these. So they are well on their way to adulthood and they're doing absolutely fantastic. Such a cool little creature. So we want to count these as we put these back in here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So there's 13 total crabs in here. And we're just going to take these and try to get them all down into the water. And then we're just going to put them right here onto the leaf. Just like that. And as you can see, they're making their way around, finding where they're going to go. So with that in here, I want to go ahead and fill this little cup up with water. And this is water straight out of a fish tank. And I'm just going to start pouring this in here. And I just want just enough water for this little area down here that I was talking about to be full of water while maintaining some dry area up here in the top as well. We now have plenty of water inside of this tub around the outside where these little crabs are able to get up out of the water. You can see one running across there. You can see one running across there. There's some right there. And these guys will be perfectly good. Now, as far as food goes, what I like to feed these guys is actually a multitude of different types of food. But the one thing that is constant is these API goldfish pellets. And the reason is, is because they have optimal protein in them for goldfish growth and things like that. And they work well. And all I do is I just take a few of them. And you can see that these are pretty tiny pellets. And what I'll do is I'll just sprinkle them around the outskirts of this tub and some in the middle here just a few probably like 10 not a whole lot and what will happen is the water will break those down and the, these baby crabs will actually feed on those over time also these goldfish pellets do not cause a lot of ammonia in the water because i've actually tested this with multiple types of foods and these seem to work the best i can leave these in here for four or five days and not have a huge ammonia spike so I will leave these in here for them to feed on constantly, but then every day I give them something different. One of the things, if you happen to have saw my last video, we fed our jellyfish live brine shrimp that you can see right here. These guys love to eat brine shrimp, so I'll put baby brine shrimp into the water column of this tub to feed these guys uh, every other day or so. Whenever I'm feeding the jellyfish, I'll squirt some in here. And that's just to keep them nice and healthy. They are scavengers, so they will look around for food. I like to put in some fresh vegetables, uh, just really small pieces of fresh vegetables. You'll see them feeding on those. But this goldfish pellet is really their kind of staple diet, and it works really well. These guys are growing fantastic. So with that, this thing is completely done. One last piece to this. To maintain moisture and to keep this water from fully evaporating all the time is I'll take a piece of saran wrap and I will take this and I will put this right over top and I do not clip the lid on, I just sit it there because it allows it to breathe but it maintains the moisture in this tub. One last thing that we need to talk about is maintaining temperature. These guys like a temperature between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, you could use a under mat heater depending on where you live and how cold it is. However, these guys live in the fish room and the ambient temperature in the fish room stays a constant about 75 degrees, 76 degrees, which makes it perfect and these guys are maintained at a good temperature for survival and for them to thrive. So let's go ahead and get these guys back where they need to go. All right guys, well hopefully you went on to enjoy this video. As you can tell, these are pretty cool little creatures and super easy to maintain. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about these little guys and if you have any feedback or suggestions on how to better care for them, I'm always open to listen. If you have not subscribed, make sure you do so and turn on your notification bell as well as follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Links are in the description. If you have not visited freshwaterscrub.com, use the code CRAB for 10% off all of your purchases at freshwaterscrub.com. And with that guys, hey, I'm super grateful for all the support you guys give the channel. And with that, hey, we'll see you next time.